This is rental car number 134, and today I'm driving the 2019 Nissan Armada SL. This is a four-door, full-size SUV that retails eh, for around $54,000. It's also got the premium package, which means it has a power sliding glass moonroof, intelligent cruise control, and blind side detection. And if you want all that, it'll set you back about $1,500. This thing actually used to be called the Pathfinder Armada, but Nissan dropped the uh, Pathfinder part back in about 2012. This is also the second generation of the Armada. It was actually introduced back in 2017, so they've been making these for at least a couple of years. And if you're curious, this is also the exact same vehicle as the Infiniti uh, QX80. It's just when they shift it over to Infiniti, they give it a few extra upgrades and charge you a whole lot more money. The base model of the QX80 starts at about $65,000. I've driven several of them, and I'm not sure it's worth it. Under the hood, we got a little bit of power. 5.6 liter, 32 valve V8 engine. It's got a seven speed automatic transmission with manual shift mode. That means if you want to, you can pop that gear shift over to the left and shift the gears manually. It's got 390 horsepower at 5,800 RPMs and some well, I think pretty good gas mileage considering the size of this vehicle. 14 miles per gallon in the city, 19 on the highway. You get yourself a 26 gallon fuel tank, which is pretty big. Now, gas by me, it's August 2019. I live in the Chicago suburbs. It's about $2.99 a gallon. So that means, at least over here, you can fill this thing up for about $75. All right, enough of the specs and the numbers. Let's talk about what it's actually like to drive this car. I want to talk about three things real quick. Handling, acceleration, and cabin noise, because those are the big three that I care about. Handling, on this thing you got yourself 20-inch machine-finished aluminum wheels, uh, and you can tell it handles pretty well, especially considering this is a really large vehicle. I had no trouble parking it. Felt really comfortable around curves, even at really high speeds, and uh, the it's, the ride is really comfortable, and it should be. I mean, you got a massive vehicle, and you're up off the ground quite a bit, so it should be a smooth ride, and it is. Acceleration is also pretty good. Now, when you slam on the gas pedal, there's about a one-second delay from the time you hit the pedal until you accelerate, but it's really smooth, super responsive in traffic, and, uh, well, it is a little bit slow to get to high speeds on the interstate, but again, that's to be expected because of how big this vehicle is. Last thing, cabin noise. Uh, just okay. You know, I do a lot of interstate driving. I'm usually cruising around at about 75, 80 miles an hour, and I found that I had to bump up the volume on the uh, entertainment to be able to hear my podcasts and my audiobooks. It's not tremendously bad, but you do hear the wind sort of whistling through the vehicle when you're driving at higher speeds. So just to quickly summarize, handling, pretty good. Acceleration, not bad. Cabin noise, eh just okay and uh, I don't know if that's good enough for me if I'm gonna spend fifty four thousand dollars on a vehicle I think I want it to be funner to drive but uh, that's me you might feel a little different so here's the key fob it's Nissan's standard fob nothing on the back Nissan's logo right up top you have a remote start button lock and unlock buttons a hatch release button right there and then a panic button now because you don't get an actual physical key, we have a push button start. It's located right here on the dash and when you turn the car on, it illuminates just a little bit in yellow. So here's the steering wheel setup. On the left hand side, we have a source button and a toggle switch to interact with the display here in the center of the vehicle. We also have a back button and volume buttons right here. And then you have buttons to answer and hang up phone calls and also to activate the uh, virtual assistant feature right here. On the right hand side, we have our cruise controls, cancel button, set and decrease the speed, on and off button right here. And then you can also play around with adaptive cruise control with these features right here. Up top, we have, I think, a pretty nice gauge cluster with a lot of dials on it. You have a temperature and a battery gauge over here on the left-hand side, along with your RPMs. A small digital screen in the center that doesn't have any screens that you can uh, shift through except for trip counters. And you access those by pressing buttons right here on the side. You have a trip counter button right here and then brightness uh, display buttons right here. So for example, 
If I want to decrease the brightness, I just hit this button right here and you'll see the brightness in the screen decreases and same for the increase button. And then you hit the trip counter a couple times and it cycles through your odometer and your trip counters A and B. On the right hand side, we have our speedometer. And then over here, we have our fuel gauge and our oil life gauge. To the left, we have pretty standard controls here. Window controls, door locks, and mirror controls. Up top are our um, memory seat buttons. We also get a silver lock and door latch. Over here on the dash, we, again, we have buttons to interact with some of the safety technology, a hatch release, and then buttons down here to turn on and off the power door features. And then all the way at the bottom, we have a push pedal parking brake. Side view mirrors are fairly large and they have blind side detection. That's this feature right here. It's hard to see, but when someone is in your blind spot, this light right here will illuminate in an orangish yellow color. And when you're trying to turn by turning on your turn signal, this will actually flash at you just to give you a little extra warning that someone is in your blind spot. And that technology is also available on the uh, passenger side as well. Up top, we have pretty simple controls to turn on the lights. You can also press a button right here to turn both lights on at the same time, along with all the other lights in the rear of the vehicle. Simple controls to open and close the sunroof, an SOS button, and then also a sunglass holder. And it has some nice felt in here to protect uh, your sunglasses. Below there, we have our rear view mirror. It's got a couple of buttons on here that you can use to program your garage doors and then an automatic dimmer feature as well. Below there is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. We have a pretty nice size screen. Let me give you just something to gauge what I'm talking about. So here's my cell phone, pretty standard size cell phone, and you'll notice that the screen itself is much, much larger than my phone. Quite a few screens to cycle through. You have dedicated controls on the bottom right here to, for example, go to the climate controls with the press of a button. You can also go to your audio screen to see what is going to play over the entertainment features. And you have a pretty nice nav screen uh, with some nice colors. And, you know, the screen is big enough, so even while you're driving, you can just kind of glance over and really get an idea of where you are. And I am in Ottawa right now, if you can't tell. Um, the app screen is, is okay. There's not a whole lot to play around with here. Mostly, it's just setting screens to adjust things like the clock. Uh, no, we do not want to set that up with a network. What I find uh, I usually keep the setting the uh, screen on is the audio screen, so I see what's playing over my uh, cell phone or the nav screen. Uh, below there we have additional controls to interact with things like the radio, an additional media button down here, which is kind of the same thing as the audio button. A uh, big button to turn on and off your hazards. A CD player right in the center. Let's see, someone leave me a CD? Nope, no CD today. There's so volume controls and a tuner knob right here. And, and these are nice because they have a little bit of rubber on the top of them, which makes it really easy to uh, grab and adjust. Uh, and you also have dedicated climate controls all the way at the bottom. Let me move the gear shift out of the way. You know, simple controls to adjust the temperature and then a button in the center to adjust the fan and then large buttons all around to adjust where the vents are blowing or turn on the rear uh, defrosters. So this works pretty well. It's actually pretty hot today and I was able to get the car to a relatively comfortable temperature really fast, which is, which is a good thing. Below there we have our heated seat controls, a power port right here, two USB ports, and then a heated seat control for the passenger. Behind there is the gear shift. It's wrapped in a pretty soft leather. Shifts through those gears really smoothly. And this also has sport mode capability, so if you like, you can put it in drive, pop the gear shift over to the left, and then press up and down to shift through, those, shift through the uh, gears manually. Also, if you put it in reverse, uh, you do get a rear view camera that pops up. It's kind of got a nice setting on this. So not only can you see what's behind the vehicle, but you also get an aerial shot of the vehicle itself, so you can see all around the vehicle, and it gives you kind of a warning if you're getting too close to something when you're reversing, which is always nice, especially in these big vehicles, because they're not always easy to park. Next to that, we have a couple of uh, storage containers. That's, this is where I've been keeping my cell phone, and two cup holders. Let me empty this out, because there is also a kind of a lid to hide this, which, which I like, because these can get kind of dirty at times. So you can, if you like, just push this closed, and it has kind of a nice wood inlay that makes it uh, 
I don't know, kind of beautiful. And if you just press the button right here, it'll pop open. Behind there, we have another storage container, again with the wood inlay, and a simple button, and a nice space to keep your cell. And then we also have uh, controls to shift the car into tow mode, snow, or turn on and off traction control. Gotta move all my drinks out of the way. We also have a nice size center armrest, very big, big enough for you and your passenger to put your elbow here comfortably. And it opens up to reveal a fairly large storage space. And there's actually a button right here to turn on and off some of the ports on the vehicle, which is kind of fun. And I'll show you those in a second. They're in the rear of the vehicle. But good size storage space down there. And then over on the passenger side, we have a glove box. Let's see, we got an owner's manual in here. And no shelf. Usually there's a shelf right here where you can store some additional items, but that is actually just what's behind the glove box. Um, but it looks like, in addition to the owner's manual, somebody left me a racing bib. Looks like the last person who rented this car ran some sort of lakeshore uh, race. So, uh, hey, good for them. But you get a good size owner's manual. Looks like it's filled with plenty of useful information. All right, I jumped in the back seat and I have actually pushed this driver's seat back all the way. So it's at the maximum distance it can go back. And I still have a ton of leg room back here. I'm six feet tall, I got pretty long legs and I still have, I don't know, probably eight inches between the back of my knees and the back of that front seat. And that is just phenomenal. You also have some pockets on the back of both the front seats. This is a really soft leather and it has a little bit of give to it. So I bet you can store some things back here pretty easily if you want to. And you get that same pocket on the passenger uh, seat as well. Behind the center armrest, we also have two USB ports. And the caps on these are kind of a rubbery feeling plastic. And it doesn't look like, well, these are pretty thick. Usually in my rentals, I see a lot of these that have just sort of broken off because they're not made out of really high quality stuff. But this feels pretty good. So I bet they last at least a little while before they come apart. And you also have some climate controls right here to adjust the uh, thermostat in the rear of the vehicle. On the door itself, not a whole lot, just your window controls, your door lock, and your door latch. And up top, we have two uh, vents right here by the passenger's head. That's pretty nice. A light. And then it also looks like someone has installed their own deodorizer, which, I don't know, smells pretty good, I guess. I'm not sure why you would do that in a rental car. And then you also have a latch or handle with a small hook to hang your jacket. And you get that same setup also on the passenger side. So your handle, a hook, two dedicated vents, and then also a light. All right, it's a little noisy, but let's try and get into the third row seat. So I'm just gonna pull up on this latch right here. Seat kind of folds forward all the way by itself. And even though this driver's seat is pushed back all the way, it still collapses without any problems. And that's a good sign. Let me jump in. All right, I'm gonna see if I can push this seat back while I'm sitting here. All right, it's a little bit heavy, but I was able to do it. And uh, I don't know, I kind of fit back here. Now, obviously my knees are hitting this seat pretty good. And I gotta be honest, I'm not super comfortable, but uh, I do fit back here. And that's not true of every third row seat, uh, especially on a lot of the SUVs. Looks like I have uh, cup holders. Somebody was nice enough to leave me a gum wrapper. And I also have controls right here where I can adjust the seat. Let me see if I can show you. So I'm gonna play around with this control here. And you'll see you can actually move the seat forward, but also collapse it back a fairly good ways just to make it a little bit more comfortable back here. Also, we have headrests back here. That's this big thing right here. And they just pop up, you know, pretty easily like that. Although, I will note that when you have the third row seat headrests up, and additionally you have the second row seats headrests uh, also in place, that you don't get a whole lot of visibility out that back window. So that is kind of a negative. But overall, it's actually pretty comfortable back here. Let me finish things up by just pointing out that your third row passengers do get their own dedicated vents, which is a great thing, and also a handle right here. And you get that same setup also on the passenger side of the vehicle. So last thing I wanna try is, uh, how do I get out of here? So I'm just gonna pull up on the same little handle. 
Look at that. That's pretty easy. And let's see if I can actually climb out. All right, so let's close things out by opening up the hatch and taking a look at the storage space back here. Now, this is what it looks like with those third row seats up, and I, uh, I think you'll agree, you still got plenty of space back here. More than enough for some suitcases, some groceries, some golf clubs, things like that. And the floor of this area does uh, reveal two storage areas. So the first one is right here. Just enough room to get maybe a couple tools. Underneath there, you actually have your spare tire kit. So you got your jack and the tool you'll need to release the spare tire, which is tucked underneath the undercarriage of this area, undercarriage. And uh, I was wearing a suit, so I didn't climb under and film that area. But trust me, the spare tire is there, and you'll need a special tool to uh, lower it down. So don't expect it to be easy. Uh, you also get some buttons back here. You press them, and it will automatically lower those third row seats for you. Uh, personally, I think this is a little too slow for my liking. I'd much rather have a manual control that just drops those seats really quickly. But uh, yeah, I guess it's interesting to do it this way. And when you do collapse those third row seats, you reveal a much, much bigger storage area. And if you need even more room, well, you can collapse the center row seats pretty easily just by pulling up on these uh, little levers right here. They either fold all the way down or collapse forward. And then you have an even more enormous area back here to haul around some items. I would not be surprised if you could easily, easily get a full-size mattress back here without an issue. All right, so that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2019 Nissan Armada. Yeah, I got a chance to drive this thing for two solid days. I put more than a couple hundred miles on this thing, and it was a... It's a good ride. I enjoy driving this one. So I think I'm going to give this three stars. Now, don't get me wrong. I love this vehicle. I'd gladly rent it again. It's a blast to drive. But for $54,000, I wanted a little bit more. I wanted an updated center console system. That touchscreen isn't great. I wanted something with a little bit more pep. I really do need more acceleration if I'm going to spend that amount of money. And I don't know, maybe just an updated, fresher look. But maybe that's me. If you disagree, please leave me a comment below. I love to chat with you about it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent and review my 135th rental car. I'll see you then.